Hey, Sun here. In today's episode, I want to talk about the full disk encryption that is found on ThinkPads such as this X1 Carbon Gen 10. Uh, I want to kind of explain what happens when it, using the BIOS, you enable the NVMe password, uh, enabling full disk encryption. Uh, and I mean, does that enable hardware level full disk encryption? Is that just some password, you know, at the BIOS level? Well, in the context of super backed OS, I was looking for ways to enable read only mode at the hardware level, ideally, uh, ideally, ideally inside uh, of an NVMe disk that can be, you know, mounted internally. Now, uh, this kind of made me stumble upon something called Opal. Opal is a full disk encryption standard that is developed by the trusted computer group or computing group, I should have said, uh, and they have published a specification for the way Opal works. So going back to my uh, ThinkPad X1 Carbon, uh, if you look here in the storage, uh, you can see Opal. Now, maybe you've wondered <laughs> what Opal actually is, uh, and Opal is the self-encrypting uh, feature of that specific hard drive. Now, all the ThinkPads X1 Carbons that I have uh, going back to Gen 6 have Opal disks. Uh, shipping from the factory by default, which is pretty cool. Those computers are designed for the enterprise. Um, looking here at the uh, documentation for that specific model, uh, you can see that, you know, it talks about full disk encryption. Uh, what is full disk encryption? It says that, you know, FDE uses 128-bit 100, AES encryption uh, in contrast to Apple's 256. That is definitely not amazing, uh, but definitely better than no uh, hardware level full disk encryption. Now, a question that you may have is, uh, is it possible to enable this and then just swap that NVMe disk to another ThinkPad? Let's say the motherboard broke or something. Uh, now, this documentation here addresses this question specifically, can I move an encrypted drive to another ThinkPad? And it says, yes, uh, the encryption key is not specific to the system. Um, well, actually, I did attempt this uh, and swap the internal NVMe disk from this Gen 10 to a Gen 6, and I wasn't able to enable that password uh, on the disk. So that's something to be treated kind of lightly. Uh, and that is a good segue to kind of addressing the elephant in the room. Um, TLDR, is it something that you should enable if your computer supports it? Yes. It is amazing to have hardware level encryption, uh, but what, you know, what is it, like, how does it work? Um, there's so little documentation there. Um, again, the Opal specification is here. It's a document that is 100 pages long, which I'm expecting most of you won't read. But I guess the elephant in the room is, uh, it's obscure. Apparently, hardware manufacturers do not implement it as rigorously. Um, it's not like Apple OMKit. Apple is notorious for being very precise in like the threshold that passes or not. In the context of Opal, apparently different manufacturers implement it in ways that are considered weak. Uh, there, are, there have been exploits uh, on Opal. And the biggest elephant in the room to me is that Opal specification does not require a secure element. What does that mean? It means that the device itself, those little NVMe disks um, that have Opal uh, support do not have a secure element for the most part as per their security model. That means that any sophisticated attacker can potentially compromise its security model if they have access to the drive physically. Uh, and that's something that worries me a lot. I think some sophisticated NVMe hard drive manufacturers may have a secure element as per their implementation of Opal, but most don't. Uh, and contrasting this to the way Apple does it, and that was really the topic of last episode, which I'll link down there in the description, uh, Apple uses data protection. Uh, it has a whole bunch of documentation that is very specific on how things are done. And on T2 Equip Max or Apple Silicon Max, uh, this full disk encryption leverages the secure enclave, which is a very, very sophisticated secure element that is part of those more contemporary Mac computers. Um, and now a question that you may have, uh, you know, looking back to last episode is, can you secure erase an Opal disk? Now, 
T the short answer is yes, thankfully. All Opal Disk, to my knowledge, uh, let me know in the comments if uh, you have read something otherwise, come pre-encrypted from the factory. That means that the data is always encrypted on those drives. What happens, and that's a little similar to the way Mac does it, um, there is a way of wrapping the encryption key with user credentials. In the context of ThinkPads, you can set a user and an admin password, uh, which interface with the Opal specification to enable those features. And that means that if you security race once those things have been enabled, uh, or sorry, if once those passwords have been enabled, uh, it allows you to nuke those keys, uh, therefore crypto shredding the entire drive. Now, again, the specification is very vague as to if you can actually address the keys themselves and nuke them. That is something that is totally possible in the context of Apple uh, data protection, given you have something called effaceable storage, which is addressable storage on which the keys are, which you can secure erase. So long story short, um, should you enable that on your ThinkPad? Yes. Uh, be careful, do backups just in case things go south, you know, but essentially it's really great that you can do this on ThinkPad computers. I would still use Lux uh, or BitLocker or whatever it's called on Windows uh, as an additional layer of protection. Uh, I would trust Apple way more in how its full disk encryption has been implemented. Um, now, there are really cool things about Opal though for the people out there that like open source. Uh, there is an open source project developed by Drive Trust Alliance. Uh, it's not related to Trusted Computer Group, by the way, which is sad. It would be nice that the group overseeing the spec would actually create some open source software and interface with it. They don't. Um, but in the context of the Drive Trust Alliance, uh, they've created a tool called setutil-cli, which you can use to interface with Opal properties. And that allows you to do something that is truly magical from the perspective of Super Backed OS. And we're going to be implementing features like this uh, in the future you can send commands to the drive and tell it to become read only using credentials to be able to change that. So that's really, really great. That means that an internal NVMe disk within a ThinkPad X1 Carbon can be set as read only. So if your operating system is uh, super backed OS, for instance, that is designed to read, uh, designed for read only hardware, it's amnesic by design, you can actually enforce that read only at the hardware level using Opal. And that is something that's amazing. Now, to that extent, I'll link to documentation on the Superback side. We have a utility that hasn't been implemented fully within Superback OS yet, but that are like the blueprints on, on, on how to enable that read only feature. Uh, last but not least, um, can you purchase a drive that has Opal out there in the wild? Uh, there aren't many, but one manufacturer that really supports users on the retail side is Samsung. So the Samsung uh, uh, 970 EVO Plus, this is the one I have here. By the way, you'll see a little PSID thing there. The PSID is used to factory reset this if you forgot your credentials. Um, but essentially Samsung has a few lines of NVMe disks that support the Opal spec. If you're looking here on Amazon and you search for Opal, you won't even find Opal. It's really this obscure thing that's more part of the enterprise world. But if you take that exact disk here and you look at the official uh, documentation for it on the Samsung website, uh, eventually if you go into spec and you go into special features, you'll see that it supports AES 256 bit TCP, uh, TCG Opal. So that's the computing group uh, thing here, uh, trusted computing group, sorry. Uh, and it says Opal. So I hope that was insightful. Um, it's something that really took me a while to figure out. It's really something that is obscure from the retail perspective, more uh, something that is present in the enterprise world. But now you know that it exists, you know you can turn it on, you have a sense of how it works, how it's poorly documented compared to Apple, but you still probably want to enable it. And if you want to go uh, all in on the nerdy stuff, you can actually interface with Opal drives using this open source project which will likely make its way into Superbacked so that when using Superbacked OS on a dedicated computer, you can actually make it read only at the hardware level. So that's all I have for you today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.